started here. Ah, maybe not among the most happiest videos, but I know things have to be done. So I thought we'd um, look into um, recycling older electronics projects. So let's get into it. So anyway, here's the um, project in question. Some of you might recognize it from one of my previous um, video series. But anyway, now it's been just standing without being used for quite a long time. And um, you know, one likes to have these projects and and, and things, but um, really, I mean, the matter of the fact is that once one's actually made a content or done the experiment, um, then um, it really uh, has no value to keep it together, which is a bit sad because one would actually like to have this as a working unit, but. Um, yeah, I have to face the reality that it's actually sometimes good to go and look at one's older projects and um, and really take a serious look and see if one could actually um, put them to use, repurpose or or similar. So I thought what I would do is to um, go through the process of um, analyzing and repurposing an old electronics project. So the, the first thing you should do is you should actually take the, the um, project in question and put it on the table like I've done now and um, then you need to um, think about it like are you going to continue this or the exact initiative for what it was built or and then um, the next step is to analyze actually um, what it contains is there anything that is uh, not so customized that it would be worth reusing for something else so anyway let's look and see what this this has to offer so um, here in the central brains it has a um, Arduino Mega and then it has a um, actually a, a hat here which I repurposed this is actually for more for servo motors but it had a bit of a, an area for prototyping so with the um, extensions for the connector so that's why I used it for this project so not specifically used for what it was supposed to be used uh, what else does this? Oh, this has a relay unit with four outputs used to be used to control fans. Fans were to create airflow inside the experiment box. Disturbance airflow. And um, then we have a, yeah, it's a network adapter which works with Arduino. And oh, then we have an SD card reader. Or reader writer, so for these larger SD cards, and then this is a <laughs> custom built level shifter since I actually didn't have level shifting um, components at home when I built this. So, but now actually, this is obsolete because I actually do have bi -dire single directional, bi directional um, uh, level shifters to adapt 5 volts to 3.3 volts and the other way around. And then what else does this contain? Uh, if we turn it around. Uh, yeah. Ah, there's a real time clock backed up with a battery because that Arduino lacks a real time clock. So then we can salvage the battery or the real time clock. And then it has. Ah! Then it has one MOSFET here which was to control the internal heater. And then there was the um, gate booster for um, the MOSFET. Because uh, MOSFETs like to be controlled with a little bit higher voltage on there, um, on the gate. So um, I built this homemade level, or the homemade, um, what they call, usually they're called MOSFET control boosters or similar. So, so I built a custom version of that. And of course it has some fans. And then... Yeah, because one of the one of the things that it was doing was measuring temperatures, so it actually has temperature sensors. Oh. Let's see if I can get in here. Maybe I have to turn it around again. Get into the box. So now we're into the box. Can't remember what that's for, but it's got a temperature sensor in it. And then here it has a heating block. Basically borrowed from a 3D printer system, so it's a heating block. Ah, some aluminium. 
So anyway, so that's what you do. You put the project on the table, extract it from everything else, take a hard think, are you going to actually continue using it? Has it actually been used for what it's supposed to be used? Is it an end of life from that perspective? Then you go and look and see what um, individual components or modules, you know, like these modules, uh, does it contain and is it worth salvaging them for for the projects? And um, I think it's... I mean, this was so custom-built for that very specific um, video series that uh, I really doubt that I'm going to continue using it as this, and it's uh, not... Oh, and then, of course, the, what you also have to think, the, what type of software have you been writing? Um, is there a possibility to reuse um, parts of the software? So I built a whole data logging software solution for this, so I, I can actually... <clears throat> if I can find the source code, because I'm actually quite bad at archiving source code stuff, so I think somewhere on my disk is the both the um, the Arduino code for this um, mega, and then um, which also contains the support for the um, networking and the SD card and uh, the control features uh, for the temperature reading. And um, then also I have a, a Python code for the computer to actually retrieve the um, measurement data from here. So that, that it did already successfully. So, but um, there are, are possibilities to repurpose um, that code uh, for other projects. And then once you've done that analysis, then um, yeah, and then it's just a matter of disassembling it. And, um, I think we can just do that on the fly, so... Yeah, and I've decided I... And, and then also, I mean, you, you could decide, like, uh, you're going to disassemble it partially, or you're going to disassemble it completely. Um, I think I'm going to disassemble this nearly completely, because if I'm going to actually reuse some of the... Mo even with some of these modules, then I probably want to... Uh, I'm thinking I want to rewire um, the solution. So start by disassembling the control section here for the fans. So we disconnect all this stuff. And then of course, you know, wires are quite good to keep. Let's see if I need to <laughs> I think I I screwed it to the to the top, so I have to actually get it under the cover to. You know, this was just the common ground I think for all the fans. And I think I'll just cut that. So, uh, and then of course most of this thing is actually jump record. Oh, yeah, and one hint was that um, if you're going to disassemble like an older project like this, it's good to photograph it completely from many different angles. I mean, just in case you want to have a hint how things were connected for, for future. Because I didn't actually build a um, schematic design for this. This was just basically out of my head. So um, it's good to, pho like I did, I took lots of photographs from all different angles so that if, if I'm interested in some particular aspect then I can go go and um, rebuild it. But as I said this this level shifter solution which actually works very well and I mean you can build level shifters yourself. I mean it isn't it isn't mandatory to buy buy circuits for them but I mean the level shifter circuits are so cheap that it, it's actually so um, yeah probably I just yeah, say that's redundant. And it was for this SD card. This one runs on 3.3 volts. Oh! Separate out all the cables. So of course, if you use this type of assembly, then it's actually quite easy to uh, disassemble and uh, repurpose. Because there isn't that much that's soldered together. And, um, circuit
I mean, some kind of a MOSFET gate booster is actually needed. If you're going to control higher currents with a MOSFET, then you really want the MOSFET to uh, to get triggered. Ah, I? Yeah, this was a cool. This is my very custom heatsink solution, heatsink fan solution. <laughs> Uh, very exotic. Oh, that's, that's a Phillips to get that out. So, as you see here, this is, I think this is from a 3D printer hot end cooling. And then I just put some holes in it, and a couple of screws, and then bolted it on top of the very, <laughs> very bad heatsink. Heatsink solution. But you know, if that's that's the way you build projects. You know, if it's not, if it's going to be a one-off, one-off uh, experimental setup, then I don't really spend a lot of time building dedicated circuit boards or anything. There's no point. Oh, let me get some more, more wire. Separate a fan unit. wires out so now we're starting to get to some of the basics and I think this circuit board here was more to signal distribution and power distribution so it's just a like you see, it's a, just a bunch of. This, I found useful makes make some of these cards. So as you see here, it's like a signal distribution, so you can actually plug this into something, and then it's all like parallel connected together. And then here, the same thing. That's for like earth and distributing earth and and, uh, and five volts. So this could actually be reused. Yeah, it's a pity to take these. It took quite a long time to build this one because I mean it wasn't built all in one go. Also built on, let's say, over time. Where are we now? Ah, oh, screwed everything to the top. So take the networking module out. Just running on headers. Mm, let's see. Anything else I can just unplug? Mm. Oh, oh, it's just wires extended. Starting to look a bit more, more clean. Oh, no, I think we. Or did I screw it in? Or what did I do? I have to unscrew this. I think. Oh, exactly. Remember what I did here. That doesn't. Can I Don't really know why. That in there. Strange. Ah, one does strange stuff in this. Prototyping things. Oh. Aha, was it the. Ah, okay, it's got an actual mega base. But then, um, it was probably to hold it all in place. So you see, clean, clean mega. No, nothing soldered to that. Now this hat is a bit redundant because 
I'm not going to actually use the functions this had. This had some, I guess, pull up resistors for the for the temperature sensors, which are ah, uh, was it? I I two square square or was it SP? One of the serial buses. I can't now remember exactly which protocol those bus that uh, is reused. But I don't think I can reuse. Anyway, I was a bit dumb using this. This is not an optimal optimal board. What if I just disconnect there? Then I can rewire. Leave a little bit of a stub there to, to know which one. Oh, and then there was a actual. I think that was a PT hundred or something. Different temperature because these the temperature sensors I were using with the with the serial bus. I think it was I two C that I was using. Funny how one forgets things. So anyway, we disconnect that. So anyway, now we've disconnected the, <laughs> the, the servo board that wasn't actually used for servo boarding. Uh, one uses what one has available. Um, so now we got this far, and then we can open it up. And as you see, then I have to unscrew all these. So I'm just going to unscrew these. So, that's the cover empty. A bit dusty. And it's got some holes in it now. And then, um... Oh, it's just the internals left. So I have to disconnect the fans, unscrew those. You can actually just do this, take the, one of the temperature sensors out. Aye. And just to show, so they're all this type of temperature. These are really nice, but they only work with um, ambient, uh, like ambient realistic temperature, so they're not, they're not very useful if you have super cold or or unreasonably hot then these won't work but um, for, for general purpose the, as I said the, I think it was an I2 square <laughs> just can't remember but I think it's I2 square uh, so it's digital or it's, you, 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 you digitally read the temperature from these which is nice so you don't have to actually do any um, yeah like this one with the PT sensor then you need to do the analog to digital conversion uh, well, these are direct digital. So that's one side. Oh, I don't really know why I built this. Can't remember. Some kind of an idea. Uh, it fits on top of there. Ah, the temperature sensor. For the temperature at a specific location. Okay. So otherwise it's just one of these temperature sensors. No big deal. Just see if we can. No, have to pull the wire. Uh, so let's salvage another one. This is heat, heat shrink tubing on all this so I have to try and cut that so I don't know if I want to keep this, this solution, I don't know if it's generally applicable to anything. Of course if I wanted to measure temperature through something this is aluminium so it would conduct the heat, the temperature. Ah, I think I'll probably just disassemble this whole thing. So anyway, I'll get the fans out. So that's the fans removed. And then the next is to try and 
figure this one out, this heating element, how I connected this. Seems to have a heat sock. the highly customized build. Most of it, at least. Well, that's that. So, let me get Screw that out. Okay, so the last thing to. F no, wait, is that one? Not okay. I need to figure out how I got this in. Oh, that has two special screws. I think I need to unscrew those to get this off to pull it through out through that hole. Or I will have to open up these wires and pull it through. That might be the easiest. See, this was built for a completely different project, but the print got a little bit, um, had a level shifting problem, so then I just, yeah. So keep your old crappy prints, or, some, or at least sometimes they are actually useful for, to be readapted for. So now that's the standard 3D printer heating block. Got lots of those. I don't know if I'll reuse it. And then it was too extra. I think I. And yeah, there's another temperature sensor at the end of this. So I actually have to. Um, no, but the wire comes through, of course, now that I disconnect it. So, bingo. So the question is would I ever have a usage for that kind of a connected heat sensor? Not really sure. I don't think so, so I'll probably. Yeah, I think I'll disassemble that. So anyway, this was the hole from the disassembly then. So um, we got a box, uh, a couple of can reuse temperature sensors, an Arduino Mega board. This one here is partially used, so I don't know if I'll be able to. And we have some circuit boards here. So I got a level sh uh, level shifter implementation. A MOSFET booster and then this um, signal uh, some supply divider can reuse that, so that's just a set of relays. Uh, we got the Ethernet adapter, we got the real time clock, we have the SD card adapter, we have a couple of fans, actually three, and then we have the actual MOSFET module. And then uh, in addition to that, salvaged cable. Uh, wires, you know, different types of wires. You know, it was the block heater, but that's, uh, I don't know if I'll 
I've got lots of those. Um, yeah, and plus software, of course. So uh, there are software modules that, um, that can be used. And then, it, then there's a, yeah, some assorted weird adapted hardware probably can be repurposed for something else. Again, in the future, if I build something. So anyway, that's um, both the sad and the positive side of reusing um, or having to go th go through one's old electronics projects. That um, sometimes it's actually. Now one just has to face the cold facts that one can't keep them forever, especially if they're not being used like six months plus. Because one can actually salvage all these modules. And if one builds modular adaptive solutions, then one can actually um, yeah, disassemble those and reuse them. Yep. So anyway, I hope you found this informative. Um, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you think the video is worth it. Um, merch is available. Or if you'd just like to buy me a cup of coffee, that's also possible. The links are in the comments. Uh, all the contributions will go to developing the channel and building more projects. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.